Uh, Jane, what do you point the strength in the pound down to? Is it weakness of dollar or is there something more pound specific going on? Well, certainly the weakness of the dollar is part of the story in cable, but we can't hide from the fact that sterling is one of the best performing G10 currencies in the year to date. And it really does have caught really the wave of the, the reflation trade. I mean, clearly the, the UK is, is, is far ahead in terms of uh, the, the vaccine rollout than many of the other uh, European countries. And of course, uh, a week or two ago, we had the Bank of England as, as well, appearing to step back from its, its threat for, for negative interest rates, at least uh, in, in the imminent uh, future. Now, that's a different tone, perhaps, to most other major central banks. We've seen most central banks really emphasise a cautious, a very dovish tone. And instead, we have the Bank of England's chief economist uh, really talking about the UK economy as, as a coil spring. So that's the trade. A lot of optimism in the short term. It's not something I would necessarily stand in front of in the short term. But I do think there are lots of hurdles ahead for the pound. Politically, as we move into the spring, we, we've got May, Scottish elections, for instance. So um, there's also the, 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 the restrictions restrictions. The Prime Minister yesterday warning to be cautious about the, the, the rolling back of restrictions. So there are hurdles ahead. But right now, it seems that the market is, is full on with that reflation trade for the UK. Right. And what about investor participation? Are you seeing institutional real money flows come into that space? Well, it, certainly, you know, that there's been a lot of caution over the last few years. I mean, really, in terms of uh, our clients and corporates uh, over the last four years, there's been a reluctance to be involved in the UK because of the political uncertainty, because they weren't really sure how this would uh, fare out. Now, uh, I think people are interested now in, in the pound and, and wondering how the UK economy is going to fare in this post-Brexit uh, uh, regime. But, uh, you know, Brexit is still beginning to, or it's still casting shadows. And, and that is still, I think, making some investment investors feel a little bit nervous. So, for instance, um, underneath the, the headlines, we've still got a lot of uh, tensions about the Northern Ireland Protocol. That probably will roll on for some time. And, and as I mentioned, uh, we've got Scottish uh, independence. That's likely to hit the headlines in a big way come May and the Scottish elections. And oddly enough, we're also behind that also, there's, there's some a few headlines about Welsh independence. So that there are issues in all parts of the union. So politics hasn't gone away in the UK, even though that Brexit deal is done. And that's still likely to make you know, some of the um, uh, corporate money and, and, and some of the institutional money a little bit more nervous. Uh, but certainly, if we look at gilts, for instance, the reflation trade is dominating. So many people really are getting involved right now. Well, a big part of the optimism, I think, that it, that that is surrounding UK assets now is linked to the UK's vaccine rollout and the fact that it's gone a lot more smoothly than other advanced economies. But looking ahead into what the path to reopening looks like, this week the UK has gone ahead and launched the uh, mandatory hotel quarantine program for travelers arriving from high-risk countries. And some think that this could pave the way to tighter border restrictions down the line, even once people are vaccinated, that we may be in a scenario where the UK opts to protect the pop, the vaccinated population by restricting borders and restricting the potential uh, introduction of variants. Do you think that the pound is priced for that scenario? Tighter border restrictions, but a domestic reopening later this year? I don't think it is. I think right now it's really ploughing ahead in this uh, uh, trade that the UK is, is going to bounce quite strongly. And I, and I think perhaps into the spring, we are going to see some some of the investors perhaps tripping over at some of these negative headwinds that are going to come. I mean, you mentioned that the border uh, restrictions, uh, I, I think that is something that suggests that perhaps and parts of the economy won't be able to bounce back as, as quickly as many people are anticipating. But also just in the in the rollout of the economy more generally. Now, we've had a, uh, an indication that perhaps schools or some schools will be reopening in, in early March. But yesterday, we did have the Prime Minister say he needs to be cautious about unrolling the restrictions more generally, because the fear is, is that if restrictions were unrolled quickly, well, we might have another pickup in in, vac in, in cases of coronavirus into the summer, in, in through July, etc. So it is possible that restrictions could be in place longer than, than the pound is appearing to, to be pricing in right now.